Kelly, when we started the show, we just got, we got a little bit of news earlier that the attorneys for the shooter um, are now saying that the shooter is non-binary and the shooter, the shooter uh, would like to use the pronouns they, them. And this is for the court in all court papers. And that's what um, Anderson Aldrich's attorneys are saying. Do you have any thoughts on that? Which it was obvious with the mugshot, that's a man. That's not a non-binary person because in no way, shape or form could they appear as a woman the next day. So the media is having a full blown meltdown about this Colorado spring shooter who says they identify as non-binary. The shooter who's pictured here claims to be a part of the LGBTQ plus community and identifies as non-binary. The gunman who opened fire and murdered five people at Club Q in Colorado Springs is now being investigated for potential hate crimes. Now he decided to open fire at a gay club, an LGBTQ club. And uh, there is some concern that his violent act was motivated by a bias against members of the LGBTQ community. But now we're also learning from his defense attorneys that he identifies, I'm sorry, that they identify as non-binary. Now look, I, I can tell you what I suspect, but it's just what I suspect. So I wanna be clear about that because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And the shooter might actually genuinely identify as non-binary. Now we have to address two things here. The first is if the shooter is a member of the LGBTQ plus community, then this destroys the media narrative that they started with, that conservatives like Lauren Burbert are responsible for the shooting because of her anti-gay rhetoric. Here is CNN laying the groundwork for that conclusion. Mass shooting in Colorado Springs, the one targeting an LGBTQ nightclub. The Denver, Denver Post editorial board has penned an op-ed titled, quote, we're looking at you, Lauren Boebert, stop the intolerance. It accuses the Colorado Congresswoman of feeding a, quote, narrative of hate and intolerance and not caring where those words can lead. Boebert has been criticized for her past comments about the LGBTQ community. She's attacked inclusive classroom practices, mocked the nation's first transgender Senate appointed official. Boebert responded to the Post editorial saying it was, quote, disgusting to try to blame the shooting on her and that it was, quote, completely false to say she's attacked the LGBTQ community. Natalie, when we started the show, we just got, we got a little bit of news earlier that the attorneys for the shooter um, are now saying that the shooter is non-binary and the shooter, the shooter uh, would like to use the pronouns they, them. And this is for the court in all court papers. And that's what um, Anderson Aldrich's attorneys are saying. Do you have any thoughts on that? I think that's um, complete ludicrous. <laughs> um, I believe they're just saying that because they want to have um, the easy way out on this. Um, that's really, really um, offending, especially being a transgender woman myself, that a male, which it was obvious with the mugshot, that's a man, that's not a non-binary person because in no way, shape or form could they appear as a woman the next day. Um, it's really offensive to even hear that, that they're playing that role. Um, and if they're non-binary, why would you go after the club where you feel safe at? Why would you do that to a community where you are welcomed in if you are non-binary? Excellent question. Obviously, all of this will have to be answered. Now, we got to hold up here one second. <laughs> Let me list out the reasons why she says this guy's lying. One, just look at him. He's a man. That's like her biggest reason. Look at him. He's a man. You see this picture? Yes, she's just saying, look, he's a man. He's not fooling anybody. Why are we pretending that he's non-binary? Now, just imagine if I was on CNN and used that same argument against her. She says, well, I'm transgender. And I said, well, look at her, she's a man. They would say that I'm being transphobic. And it fascinates me that they use these hypocritical arguments that they promote, right? If someone says, I want to be called she, you're not supposed to question that. You're supposed to say, well, call them she and let's move on. But they're questioning it. Why? Because 
it doesn't flow with the narrative. They want to blame someone for this tragedy and they want to blame it on transphobia and anger against the LGBTQ plus movement. It's Lauren Boebert's fault, remember? So the only way you can get past that is by saying that this person is lying about being non-binary. This also reminds me of Ezra Miller. Remember when he got arrested and he was screaming that he was non-binary? I'm not transgender, non-binary. I don't want to be searched by a man. I'm transgender, non-binary, and I don't want to be searched by a man. I claim my Fourth Amendment rights. Well, nobody ever challenged the fact that, hey, he's lying, right? Just imagine if I use the excuse, hey, look at Ezra. He looks like a man. He's not non-binary. He's lying. Defending, especially being a transgender woman myself, that a male, which it was obvious with the mugshot, that's a man. That's not a non-binary person because in no way, shape, or form could they appear as a woman the next day. That wouldn't have gone well. Matter of fact, I would have been canceled for being transphobic, but it's okay for them to do it? Yeah. Now, another reason why this whole non-binary thing became an issue is because it seems like the state wanted to charge him with committing a hate crime. Now, it's extremely tough <laughs> in any jurisdiction for you to convict someone of committing a hate crime against their own group. So you don't really see a lot of black people being charged with committing hate crimes against other black people. You don't see a lot of Hispanic people being charged with hate crimes against other Hispanic people. And you don't see a lot of LGBTQ people being charged with hate crimes against their own community. Why? Because it's just hard to prove that this person who is part of this community also has a bias, a murderous bias for that community. Here is Anna from the Young Turks explaining it. So they thought the defense attorney coming out to say that the, the shooter here is non-binary means that a non-binary identifying individual can't be anti-trans. So this gruesome, horrific act of violence was not the fault of the right wingers stoking, you know, fears and tensions and all sorts of negativity among American constituents. They don't they don't want to take any responsibility for that. That's what this is about. So they're pointing to him to the shooter and arguing, well, I mean, if this person identifies as non-binary, that means that, you know, Aldridge cannot have any hatred in their heart toward members of the transgender community. It means that this act of violence was not motivated through our endless hateful discourse directed at transgender individuals and the LGBTQ community. So as you can see, Anna is desperate to blame the Republicans for this shooting. To the point where even if the shooter was transgender, non-binary, whatever, it's still the Republicans' fault that this shooter, even if it wasn't, motivated by race or hatred and this person just had some beef and went down there and shot people because this person had a beef with the group or with couldn't get into the club we don't know what the motive is but she now knows that this person is number one lying about being non-binary and this is only some excuse to get out of hate crime charges and even if it's true the person is non-binary it's still the republicans fault why because they say bad things sometimes against non-binary people. And that's what caused this person who happens to be non-binary to go and do this to other non-binary people. Again, desperate to keep the narrative going. Remember, it doesn't matter what actually happened. It matters who politically takes the hit for it happening. And they need this person to be the big bad boogeyman who listened to Lauren Berbert and all the evil Republicans and went and picked up a firearm and went and did this because that person was motivated by them. Even though there's no evidence to even show that. Even though it seems that this person is part of that group. Now, one of the more interesting parts about this too is that it's not surprising that someone from the LGBTQ plus community committed this crime against other people in that community. Why is that? Well, with most criminal activity, most crimes occur within racial groups. Let me explain. Most black people who are victims of crime are likely to be victimized by other black people. Let's take murder as an example. More than 80% of black people who are murdered in America are murdered by other black people. More than 80% of white people who are murdered in America are murdered by other white people. Same for Hispanics, same for Asians. I think Asians are almost like 90%. So if you see someone who's murdered and you see their race, likely about eight times out of 10, that person was killed by someone within their same ethnic group or race. And the same is true for the LGBTQ plus movement. If they are victims of crime, the majority of time they're gonna be victimized by someone within their own community. So it's not unheard of 
that people within a community are victims of crimes of people who are also part of that community. Matter of fact, it's actually rare that someone outside of your community will come into a community and commit these crimes. Not impossible, it happens, but it's rare. So if this person is non-binary, that would fit within the trend of someone within a community committing crimes against those same people within that community. Just like with blacks, just like with whites, just like with all other groups. Okay, final thought time. This person, this non-binary person, killed five people. They should go to jail forever, right? Hate crime or not, they should be going to jail forever, right? They were caught in the act, no problem. If this person was motivated by hate, then it'll add more time, more time to their charges, but they're still going away forever, right? So hate crime or not, it really doesn't really even matter in this particular case. Second, it's fascinating to see those same tropes, things that could get you canceled, if anyone else was to say it, right, when the right wing says it, they say they're being intolerant, they're being homophobic, and now they're saying the same thing. God forbid Lauren Burbert said, look at that guy. He's a woman. He's trying to be a woman. Just imagine if Lauren Boebert said that. She would be canceled. They'd be saying, oh, she's a hypocrite. She's homophobic. But now when someone essentially does it and says they're non-binary and they don't agree with it, it's no just believe them. It's no we should accept it for who they are. It's they're lying. They're lying because, quote, <laughs> they look like a man. What the fuck is that? It was obvious with the mugshot, that's a man. That's not a non-binary person because in no way, shape, or form could they appear as a woman the next day. Really? Is that the reason why you can just look at this? You know, if I look at a picture and say, hey, that person looks like a I'm going to be called homophobic. So now also, I think we also have to understand the perspective too, is that this person could just be lying because they want to try to get out of the hate crime charges. It's possible, but we need some evidence for that. And it's fascinating to see that now they essentially want this person to prove that they're actually non-binary. And asking someone to prove their gender status is a big no-no, but it's only a big no-no if, if they can't spin the narrative that it's someone else's fault, it's the Republicans' fault that this happened. I think at the end of the day, this person should be going to jail forever. And I think this conversation about if he's really non-binary or not is just some type of trope that needs to end because it doesn't matter who this person is, to be honest with you. What should matter is what the person did and the fact that this person did this horrific crime, that should galvanize us all to want to make sure this person suffers as much as possible for the rest of their lives for what they have done. It doesn't matter how they identify. It only matters what they did. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'll see you next time. Peace.